Um, our next uh, speaker is a longtime colleague of mine, Dr. Jihan Jin. Um, uh, Dr. Jen is an associate research scientist in epidemiology at the University of Michigan School of Public Health. Her research focuses on understanding the underlying mechanisms of the natural history of cancer and also on developing innovative methodology and computational tools to accurately predict the risk of lung cancer and colorectal cancer. Uh, Dr. Jen has been a key investigator with CISNET as well, the Cancer Intervention Surveillance Modeling Network, and she is also the co-lead of the CASTER uh, Data Analysis and Dissemination Core, where she has established very important infrastructure to process multiple cross-sectional longitudinal data sets to support numerous center projects. And I know that I know firsthand that that data has been very, very essential to making sure that the models at Castor reflect the latest data. So uh, welcome, Dr. Jen. And we're going to hear her speak about uh, the, the impact of a flavored cigars ban and modeling challenges and perspectives. So thank you. Go ahead. Thanks, Jamie, for the uh, introduction, and thanks to the Castor Organizing Committee for inviting me to share some of our work that um, the DAD Core has done to support like, simulation modeling uh, within the Castor Center. So today I will talk about uh, modeling the impact of flavored restrictions on cigars, and for the purpose of uh, illustration, I will present some new models on the development by Castor investigators. Uh, to highlight the issues around the modeling uh, cigar flavored restrictions. Uh, and I don't have any conflict of interest to disclose. Um, so here is the outline of this talk. So I will first talk about the uh, background for the flavored uh, cigar span, then introduce some uh, previous and current and also future cast or simulation models uh, dealing with the bands of a flavored tobacco product as uh, examples. And after that, uh, I will talk about the input data needed for simulation models of cigar use and uh, conclude the talk with some uh, discussion points. Uh, something, okay. So um, Dr. Libby gave a nice presentation on his SAVE model uh, today. And his model is a nice example of a simulation model that has been used to uh, evaluate the public health impact of the flavored tobacco product bans, uh, such as the ban on menthol cigarettes and cigars. And results from this model were uh, included as supporting evidence in the uh, April 2021 announcement by the FDA for uh, its intention to ban menthol cigarettes and cigars nationwide. Uh, but there isn't yet a, simulation, a similar model to evaluate the impact of regulations restricting uh, flavors in cigars. So in Castor, we are currently developing simulation models uh, for cigar and cigarette use, incorporating the uh, transitions through initiation and cessation within the product, and also switching between two products. And these models uh, will be used to evaluate the impact uh, of a cigar flavor span on future smoking patterns of cigars and cigarettes, and also uh, downstream uh, public health outcomes. So uh, now I will briefly introduce the cigar and cigarette model, CASEM, which is a mock-up model that uh, aims to project uh, the annual prevalence of cigar and cigarette smoking. And this modeling effort is led by uh, the Georgetown team in collaboration with uh, the Castor Project 3 and DAD teams. So two scenarios will be considered under this modeling. So first is a, a base case scenario without a cigar flavor ban. And the flavor cigar, uh, cigar ban scenario is another one which will account for uh, changes in the use of cigars and cigarettes when the ban is implemented. Uh, then by comparing the outcomes from these two scenarios, uh, the model will estimate the potential uh, number of prevent, uh, prevented smoking attributable deaths and life years lost as a consequence of the implement implementation of the cigar flavor ban. So um, this is a, a diagram of the case model, which consists of the seven compartments. So never smokers represent the, uh, people who haven't smoked both cigars and cigarettes. And never smokers became uh, become uh, either cigarette or cigar users once they start smoking uh, either product. 
And individuals in the model can be dual cigar and cigarette users if they use both products at the same time. And in this model, uh, the cigar use was separately modeled as flavored versus unflavored. And once individuals quit smoking both product, they enter the uh, non-current smoker compartment. And um, I will also briefly introduce other simulation models that the uh, Castro investigators are developing uh, to highlight the challenges of uh, uh, considering more product. Um, and yes, uh, as highlighted by Dr. Sleepy and um, the Blackley yesterday, it is important to have alternative models to assess the uh, variability in outcomes due to the model structure and assumption, assumptions. So uh, Project One team is developing uh, a uh, two tobacco product and flavors uh, population model, TTPFP model, which is a, a simulation model for cigarette and cigar use, which has uh, four user st uh, states per product, uh, never current flavored and current unflavored, and uh, formal use. Um, but that this one, uh, this model doesn't differentiate flavored versus unflavored uh, yet. Um, and the, like a case model, uh, the purpose of this model is to evaluate the impact of the cigar flavor ban on the use of the uh, patterns of these two products and also the resulting the health outcomes. So this diagram shows that the structure of the TTPFP model. So the first letter on top represented the uh, status of cigarette use, and the second letter at the bottom represent the status of cigar use. Uh, N means never use, CF is a current flavored. Uh, oh, it was differentiated, sorry. I missed, yeah. And CU is a current unflavored product use, and then F is a former use. And then there are 16 compartments in total. And then another one is that the Castor investigators also plan to develop in the future uh, other tobacco, uh, tobacco simulation models for vulnerable populations, such as a Hispanic and AIAN populations, and also like vulnerable subgroups at the intersection of race, ethnicity, and social economic status. And these models will include three tobacco products, uh, cigarettes, ends, and cigars and estimate the effect of uh, flavor restriction policies on use patterns of these three products across uh, key population subgroups. And the uh, uh, ultimate goal of these models is to um, estimate the short-term and long-term effect of tobacco regulations under various policy scenarios, uh, such as tobacco use prevalence and uh, tobacco attributable deaths and life years loss in key population uh, subgroups. So here is a diagram of the model for three products. So now um, we have three letters in each compartment. The first letter uh, represents the status for cigarette use, the second one for ends use, and then third one for uh, cigar use. And um, N indicate never, and C current, and F former use for each product. And this model has uh, 21 use categories in total. So uh, now I'll talk about the input data for simulation models of cigar and cigarette use uh, using case model as an example. So in general, uh, as input parameters for simulation models, uh, we need initiation, cessation, and prevalence of current use per product, as well as that the uh, transition rate between product and for the evaluation of health outcomes, we also need uh, mortality, morbidity rates by uh, product for each uh, use category, uh, which usually consists of never, former, and exclusive single product use and dual or poly use. And we also need uh, information or make some assumptions about the policy or intervention effect on user transition rate uh, when evaluating the impact of the implementation of some policies. And as an illustration, I will talk about input data sets for the case model, uh, which are based on uh, PES uh, and TOS CPS data set in the following slide. So first, um, 
the PES uh, study. So after a careful model development process and also many, many meetings, we decide to focus on the regular cigar use for the case model. And since uh, this is more likely to have health implica uh, implications, so uh, using the, the past data, we defined um, current regular cigar use as ever using cigars fairly regularly, and then currently using these um, the five or more days in the past 30 days, uh, considering the number of days used for the three cigar types included in past. And we separated the cigar use into flavored versus unflavored use. And uh, the purpose of the case model is to evaluate the impact of a cigar flavor ban. And the data shows that um, most premium cigar users uh, don't use flavored brands and have uh, different, somewhat different characteristics uh, from the users of uh, the other cigar types. So to focus on our main interest in the flavored cigar ban, we excluded uh, exclusive premium cigar users from the category uh, for the current regular cigar use for now. Um, but um, the other modelers, of course, that could, could uh, certainly uh, make different assumptions about cigar use, uh, depending on the purpose of their study. And current regular cigar use uh, was defined in the user way uh, as smoking uh, more than 100 cigarettes in their lifetime and currently using every day or some days. Okay, so now um, to evaluate, uh, to generate the transition rate for the case model, using the past data, we conducted an empirical uh, transition analysis for cigar and cigarette use with the following seven use categories. So never uh, regular cigar and cigarette use, and second category is a non-current use. And then we put, we decide to put that the exclusive premium uh, cigar uh, users into this second category for now. And then three single product use categories, and then two dual use categories. So here you can see that the uh, one year transition probabilities between these seven use categories stratified by the age group, one for the ages 18 to 34, and then the other for ages 35 plus. Uh, and in general, um, young adults are more likely to drop cigar use in the following year. So for example, um, as you can see, in the estimate that occurred in the green uh, here, about 47% uh, of exclusive um, unflavored cigar users, and then 51% um, of flavored cigar users quit in the following year in the younger age group. In contrast, only the 31% uh, quit cigar use in the corresponding individuals with ages as 35 plus. And a similar pattern is observed among the dual users. So if you look at the uh, numbers in the uh, blue color here, about 60%, 64% of dual uh, unflavored cigar users and 56% of uh, uh, flavored cigar users with cigarettes uh, became uh, exclusive cigarette users in the younger age group in the following year, but only 37% and 47% did so in the older age group. And as you can see in the uh, blue, uh, Purple color here, um, the, in the younger age group, only 14% of dual unflavored cigar users and 24% of dual flavored cigar users remained as, as such in the following year. On the other hand, 39% and 34% remained as dual users in the corresponding older, older group. Now, uh, another separate analysis uh, to estimate the other input parameters for the case model was done using the TOS CPS data. And here is the summary table for cigar use information in this data set. Uh, TOS CPS uh, collected information on ever and current cigar use, uh, use starting uh, 1992 to uh, 1993 survey data, and more detailed information for years since quit, duration of cigar use, and then flavor are only available in the three recent surveys. And one thing to note is that um, the TSCPS didn't separate the questions by subtype of a cigar. And uh, in the 2010-2011 survey, uh, I'm just gonna uh, focus on the flavor question here. So they asked the question for cigar flavor as, during the past 30 days, did you usually smoke flavored cigars? 
Uh, by flavored, we mean fruit, candy, alcohol, club, or any other flavorings. And the question got slightly changed in the 2014, uh, 15, and uh, 2018, 2019 surveys. Some tobacco products come in flavors such as menthol or mint, clove spice, fruit, chocolate, alcohol, or other flavors. And when you smoke a cigar, uh, is it usually flavored? Okay, so, and we conducted an age period cohort analysis of cigar use patterns in TUSCPS. And from this analysis, we estimated um, ever current former and never uh, prevalence, as well as the in, uh, initiation and cessation probabilities. And all these estimates were obtained by age, sex, and birth cohort. And uh, since the flavor information was only available for three years of the uh, TUSCPS survey, uh, in this analysis, we didn't uh, obtain the estimate by flavors, flavors used. And the analysis followed the same method as those in the uh, recently published AJPM special issue, which uh, estimated the patterns of a birth cohort specific smoking histories uh, by social demographic, uh, demographic grab, uh, group in the US uh, by the CISNET uh, long working group and Castor. So in the following slide, I will present some preliminary results from this analysis. Uh, so the first, this figure shows the uh, prevalence of current cigar use for selected birth cohort. And as you can see, cigars are used predominantly uh, by um, males. And among males, uh, the peak of prevalence occurs around age 20 and increased until uh, like the 1970 birth cohort, then decreased in the following birth cohort. But then it increased again in the birth cohort 1995 in both males and females. And this one uh, shows that the initiation probabilities of cigar use. And what is interesting in this result is that um, the initiation has a bimodal distribution. So uh, if you look at the male result here, the first peak occurs around age 20 in each birth cohort, but then the second peak around at the calendar year 2005 in all uh, birth cohort. And in general, um, initiation increased by birth cohort until the 1970 cohort for males and uh, or like 1980 cohort for females, then decreased uh, afterward. Now, here are the cessation results. So data was uh, a bit sparse in females. So the results uh, for the cessation uh, are not quite reliable for females. So focusing on males here, the cessation probabilities increase with age. And this, uh, they increase by birth cohort until uh, like 1980 birth cohort, then slightly decreased in uh, recent birth cohort. So uh, by doing all this analysis, uh, we noticed some challenges and limitation in the past and then TUSCPS data set. So first in the past, um, cigar use information was collected for three different subtypes. So, um, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a going to be uh, helpful if you want to do the sub, some subtype analysis. However, in our case, we need to drive a current overall cigar use by combining all cigar types, um, unless uh, we have a separate component by cigar type in the simulation model. But that will be uh, overly uh, complex given the limited time frame and also sample sizes. And then, relatedly, an um, important limitation are the small sample sizes in some subcategories in the transition analysis. And for the TUSCPS data, the flavor information was uh, limited, so only available for the last three surveys, so which uh, doesn't allow us to do our transition uh, trend analysis of cigar use stratified by flavored versus unflavored. And another limitation is that uh, the TUSCPS data doesn't have information on regular cigar use, which means that uh, the current use is a mix of the experimental and also regular cigar use. So um, it's a bit challenging to interpret uh, some result from the trend analysis. Like for example, the second peak around the calendar year 2005 in the initiation probabilities of cigar smoking uh, that we saw earlier. So to, to conclude, um, as Drs. King and Warner and also other speakers have already mentioned, 
modeling plays an important role in assessing the potential impact of specific um, the tobacco regulations on the patterns of tobacco product use and also resulting the health outcomes uh, by integrating multiple data sources into a single uh, analysis framework. Um, the models will help to identify the information gaps and also propose uh, priorities for additional data collection that will facilitate the future research. Um, but we also need to keep in mind uh, some challenges to developing the simulation models of cigar use. So first, the long-term cigar use data is lacking, uh, and the landscape of cigar product use keeps changing, uh, especially with the various cigar flavors and uh, types available in the market. And information on cigar flavors may not be sufficient in some data sets to provide uh, reliable input data for models. And finally, the, uh, some um, heparjad or sporadic patterns of cigar use and the disproportionate use in some subpopulation, like for example, like in Black Americans, make it, make it challenging to develop uh, some reliable models that can be used to project the uh, impact of a cigar flavor ban on the whole US population. Uh, so I want to thank the uh, Castro Symposium Organizing Committee to organizing this uh, great symposium. And I also thank the Castor DAD and P uh, Project 3 teams and also the Georgetown modeling team for their help on data analysis and also processing and preparation.